Pinto. Hi, uh, today is uh, August 11, 2018. I am with Bangtan Sims from Bisbee, Arizona at the conference which is uh, Tesla Tech in uh, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, just introduce yourself. I'm Byington Sims. I live in Bisbee, Arizona. My work is galvanic bath and rice machines. Uh -huh. I'm here at the Tesla conference. I have a table set up. I'm uh, offering them for sale. Uh -huh. And also demonstrate at the pool the galvanic bath. This galvanic bath, it, it's an incredible invention. It, it super detoxes the body far beyond what any other method um, and it pulls because it pulls the toxin straight into the water and doesn't go through the liver and kidneys and so you can pull enough stuff out of the body that would kill you otherwise and if you get all these toxins out of the body then degenerative diseases just go away the body can heal itself if you get stuff out of its way and perfect uh huh <laughs> Unfortunately, modern medicine doesn't believe in that. They only believe in making money, and they don't want to cure anything. You know, cure is a forbidden word <laughs> in the medical community. Uh -huh. So I offer this alternative for people to get real healing. Because uh -huh. our bodies accumulate toxins, that these chemicals that we put in the environment is really poisoning the planet and poisoning us too. And the nature doesn't know how to get rid of them. The, the bodies were never designed to deal with things like that. So I saw how it's designed. I, I really like the engineering. It has silver, uh, pure silver in it. Oh yeah, that's, the anode is pure silver, so it's making colloidal silver in the water. Mostly to kind of help sanitize the water. And the very smallest particles of the ionic silver gets kind of driven into the tissues where you're Treating. And it's kind of movable. It's a piece which you tie, uh, put near your uh, some piece of your body where right. part of your body which hurts. You yeah. sit in the bath, and it is safe. The electricity comes from a battery, low low voltage yeah, battery. Yeah, it's a battery. So it's rechargeable. Yes, and you'll go. You'll find areas. You can scan your body with the anode, and you'll find areas where there's a bite or a pull, and that's where it's pulling something out of your body that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. Then other areas, you know, there's nothing. You don't feel anything much because there's nothing there for it to pull on. Most it seems like the stuff accumulates mostly in the joints, yeah. and so the anode pulls out the acidic toxins, and the cathode pulls out the the alkaline toxins and the heavy metals. So you put two electrodes in the bath. The battery stays out. You turn it on. You sit in the bath. Yeah. And move out. Move the piece with the uh, silver. You move it around to, to right. heal different parts. And that pulls the acidic and the pathogens out. It, and the effect is not um, chemical, I mean, there is so little silver dissolved, right? Right, so little, that anode it's will last for years. More like bioenergy. Right, as long as you don't salt the water, that's, they have the voltage run up to about 30 volts and you're drawing about 30 milliamps in the water mm -hmm. when it's pulling. And so you don't, so you don't need to salt the water. You right. make it more conductive. The tap water is plenty conductive with the minerals that come in it. So electricity does the work? Yeah, the electricity does the work. Electricity breaks the free radical bonds so that it, and then it discharges <clears throat> out into the water. The anode just pulls it right out into the water. What, what's another invention you're working on? Um, that's uh, right now, that's pretty much it. And I've been I've added the right frequency input to it. So oh, right, yeah. You, you have it. this uh, Android phone, and you download a certain application, and choose the frequency set, and the, the, the... Wait a second, that's the other device. The other one is the plasma <coughs> uh, emitter, like Rice used. He, so I'm using the same design for uh -huh. the plasma ball that he did. Uh -huh. And that makes that outperforms all these other machines that use the different bulbs. Right. You know, uh -huh. Some of them use neon, some use uh, argon or something. And then uh, uh, Rife experimented with all that and found helium to be the best. Uh huh. And so that's what's in what I use, and it works better. I mean, the electronics. The original one that I got from a guy swapped the bath machine for it, <laughs> and it was really crude. It's, it had two ignition coil, car coils in it, and a switching transistor, and it was in a 
crude wooden box, you know, with the rough saw on and everything. And <laughs> so I swapped him one of my machines for that because he cured him himself of, of bladder cancer uh -huh. with this thing. And it, so I improved upon the the electronics. I used a, a you know a, a built used a, a Walton Crockcroft the power supply to boost the voltage from the house current up to about 800 volts. And then I used a MOSFET transistor for switching. And it worked so much better. I mean, I was getting so much power, it was burning the bulbs. I had to put more resistors in the, in line with the bulb to, so it wouldn't overpower it. And then I just, then I went from that to found that the fluorescent light ballast would do the perfect job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't burn out the tubes. So I can kind of just confirm. My impression is that uh, Bington is amazing engineer, amazing engineer, very very good sense of engineering. And and you attach the Android, so you, you plug Android into so 3.5 connection cable. You plug into Android, yeah. you plug it into device, and uh, yeah, it the, set the, set the frequencies, and it works. Yeah, they got the Z app, which is a <laughs> free app. You can get it from the Google Play Store, and it. Run, has all the frequency sets and from A to Z, uh -huh. and it runs it automatically. Mm -hmm. Now they even had a make your own frequency list, which I thought was a great idea, but then uh -huh. when I went to try to use it, I was gonna put the dolphin frequencies in it. Wow. So I put the first one in there, which is uh, 0.5, that went in, and then the, uh, the other one was 1.5. Oh, the little sign comes up, that's in our database, and they wouldn't let me use it. Well, how stupid. I mean, that disables the whole point of having a make-your-own list. Uh -huh. I don't understand why. So there are some bugs in the program which don't, don't allow you to make specific frequencies, but, I mean, that is like lots Anything of frequencies Anything on there. there that's already in their database you can't use. Now, and this is a disappointment because I know a lot of people can feel the frequencies that are working on them, and the other frequencies, they don't feel anything. So I would uh -huh. take the frequencies in the database and compile a new list and just eliminate the ones that didn't work. And All right. Didn't feel so we have to write. We can't to the, do that. I mean, the the app is free, so we should write to the makers and ask them for a modification. Possibly they just didn't pay attention. Yeah, it, it seems like somebody designed that thing, and then somebody else comes along and and disables it. It's, you know, uh, why would yeah, they no, even have so. that app? It have that feature on. Maybe the there app. is a paid version. <laughs> I didn't. They would have shown that to me, offered that because I see that on the other apps. Side. Let's go on the positive yeah. side. So you had a wonderful uh, idea about uh, vitamin C. Can you tell tell this story? Yes. The the um, started with Anunnaki. Okay. We supposedly, according to the way the stories goes, that we were created by the Anunnaki. They took the Homo erectus, which was just an animal on two legs just having a reactive mind and very little or no analytical mind like us. So the Anunnaki come along, they want to create slaves, so then they um, create a chimera uh, from them to and us, you know, from the, An the Anunnaki, so we're half Anunnaki and half Homo erectus, or animal, we're half animal and half Anunnaki, and so we have a reactive mind and an analytical mind, which are always at war with each other. You know, consequently, look at this world. It's all conflict, and that's why. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're basically incompatible to ourselves after what they did. That's right. And so one of the things, then they wanted to shorten our lifespans and, and, and uh, reduce our capabilities so that we could never, there could never be an uprising of us. So. They crippled us and, and dumbed us down to the point where we could never do overthrow them. <laughs> Just let me let me uh, expand here. I recently listened to the uh, to the stories about Nordic gods like Odin and Loki and Thor, and uh, one of the things about the gods was that they were immortal. They had so-called apples of immortality, and I was thinking. That is the same story. There were like humans around, which were mortal, and uh, Nordic gods were immortal. Maybe Nordic gods were Anunnaki. Yeah, they lived for thousands of years. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Please continue. So anyway, they um, they created to be their slaves, and they didn't want us to be able to, you know, up, 
they have an uprising, so we, they dumb us down. And then one of the things they did is they crippled our vitamin C production. So you'll, there's only four species of, of beings on this planet that don't produce their own vitamin C, and we're one of them. I figure the other three were just their laboratory experiments to perfect the technique, and then they did us. And that greatly shortened our lifespan because we don't produce our own vitamin C. Like a dog, for instance, makes maybe, a big dog will make 80 grams a day. You see, that's why you can eat a rotten corpse or something and not get sick. If we had vitamin C, we'd live a lot longer. We wouldn't get all these degenerative diseases. Our body would detox itself completely. And, you know, if they, if they would just simply add vitamin C between chemotherapies, it would make the therapy work better. But since they're not in business for curing, they only want to make money and they don't want us to live long because you know, they want the population, the population's exploding. So, I mean, they do have a valid point to keep the population under control, but the way they're doing is, is pretty awful. <laughs> so the idea was what? Well, and I'm wondering if anybody, any scientist out there is even working on trying to reactivate the vitamin C gene because we still have the gene, but it's turned off. But something could be done to turn it back on. From the genetics perspective, if something is not working, most likely it's already degenerated. Like if, if the gene is not working in our genome, maybe there is a trace of it, but it wouldn't be, it would be like accumulate lots of mutations. So the easiest way to uh, bring well, it back would be to genetically engineer a human with a new inserted gene or Maybe it is possible to take our immune cells or some other cell tissue right. cells, insert a fresh gene and put it back and have part of it. I mean, right. what, what tissue would produce a vitamin C? I don't know. Maybe don't know. say maybe liver, for example. Right? There's this thing called CRISPR that's supposed to... Yeah, CRISPR can easily, I mean... It they can could do that. Easily insert. So, so maybe making uh, some cells with uh, vitamin C and put a thing. Take the liver biopsy, cr uh, in insert the... Uh, uh, gene and put it back and liver I know can grow by itself pretty well. Well so. they could pull a gene, a healthy gene out of an animal that's yeah, got I mean it's easy to design. Yeah. Transfer to, I mean it can be done with today's yep. technology, can yep. it? Absolutely, yeah. And how come nobody's working on that? Secret, so, maybe they are secretly. I mean, no I don't think anybody's working. People just work on something which, uh, how to say, so this is the idea for taking. I'm not taking it. It's not my bread and butter, but uh, yeah. if anybody listens, that's a great idea for actually making it in, into would, a product. That would be a very worthwhile project. Uh, or co create some lymphocytes which produce vitamin C. Or, yeah, liver, you know, you have to think of connective tissue. Connective tissue is a great, or skin. Yeah. Yeah, skin is easy because, I mean, skin is safe because, you know, skin cancer is not a real cancer. It's it has a mechanism of cancer, but uh, the mortality of skin cancer, of non-melanoma skin cancer, is exceptionally low because uh, the keratinocytes, they are programmed to die. They grow on the skin, and at a certain point, they die. So if the skin cancer happens, you can cut it out, and uh, there is no problem with it. So, so keratinocytes would be a great candidate because even if you mess up with them, it's still, they are very, they are like one of the least carcin carcinogenic, uh, 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 mm, the, the, the cells which are least possible to create, to become cancer and be dangerous and, meta and metastasize. So if you put vitamin C and keratinocytes, it's very safe. Yeah, if you had the vitamin C, you probably would never even get the cancer in the first place. Right. And many other things you would not get in the first place. Right. So I would say, Create uh, modifying your own, or maybe creating some stem cells. Like you know, there are some stem cells which don't produce immune immune rejection in human. Yeah. So stem cells, maybe you can create universal stem cells, which would be uh, can be taken or like painted or injected to humans, and yeah, and they won't be rejected. So you don't have to do it for every patient separately. You can do it. Uh, it would probably have to be secretly done because I doubt the governments would want that done. You think so? I think so. I mean, I mean, it can be done as a private enterprise yeah. and just commercially. Maybe you cannot sell it in the United States, but another thing, you know, for around here, <laughs> even things like the galvanic bath, they would it's so competitive, and they, the the uh, monopoly here, the you know big pharma monopoly, is 
so big and powerful it just buys the government and bribes them with huge grants to make laws to protect their profits. So it's completely yeah, un-American. Let's speak about positive things. Um, and on the positive side, how much is your uh, product, uh, the Galvanic Boss? Yeah. How much does, do you sell it for? Well, I've got my newest model. I've got it's about three hundred and fifty dollars. It's a super bargain. Yes. <laughs> Because this thing, it, it outperforms so many other machines out there. I mean, especially for detoxing. And if detoxing gets the junk out of the body's way, so it can heal itself. And it's made in Arizona, yeah. with your own hands. Yeah. And the pricing is really good because uh, you work for yourself. Right, and it's, it's hand-built. Now, if it was mass-produced, it could, the price could be a lot lower, but because it's homemade, you know, it's it's, it's built by hand. And it's and unique. It, and it's unique. It, it's, uh, you know, it's more like a work of art. You know? How do people find you online? Um, Aquatronicsglobal.com. Aquatronicsglobal.com. And the second product? Hmm? The second product, the... Oh, the uh, Rife machine. Rife machine. So my Rife machine, Modified Rife machine. U uses the same original plasma bulb design that Rife used. And what he did, he uses discarded x-ray tubes and regassed them. Mm -hmm. And then there's a company in Boulder, Colorado, mm -hmm. and uh, Allen Scientific Glass, who uh, manufactures anything you want him to do out of glass. So I gave him one of the bulbs that was made in Canada and he, he produced, he's able to copy it here and produce it a little cheaper and it gets rid of the exchange, currency exchange rate which is about sixty dollars and so it eliminates that <laughs> and, it, and it's just as good a product or better than the one made in Canada. Excellent, so what's the price for the whole machine? Um, I'm, I'm making about around fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred? And uh, plus shipping. Yeah, plus shipping. And now I've added. I'm adding the the um, second input to hook up to the Z app on an Android. So, so, so for the Z app, Z, Z app is actually cheaper, right? No, it's not cheap. Same price. It, it's uh, well, the newer ones. I'm using a small, you know, smaller, making it smaller. It's. Uh, I, uh, about twelve hundred for, for the newer one. Yep. It's a smaller unit, and it runs on twelve volts, and it has an adapter so you can plug it in the wall. And I'm using a fluorescent light ballast to drive the tube, a twelve volt fluorescent light ballast to drive the tube. I just can certify. I really like the products. I really like how they made, and there is a lot of good engineering there. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you about the other uh, idea which you described with the um, bow and arrow Oh, and yeah, device. the, the Flanagan Tensor. Flanagan Tensor. Yeah, it was, uh, you call it tensor energy, where you take a piece of metal, and like a flat piece of metal, and bend it like a bow. And you have to throw your hands. So, so you have like a bow and arrow, you have a string across it to pull it in a, in a bow shape. Then you have hooked to that string another uh, string hooked to a. All right. You could use it, hook it to a speaker even, and attach it to the speaker cone. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so that vibration would, would flex the bow uh -huh. and would send a, a tensor wave like a straight beam to uh -huh. a receiving element, would be the same thing. Uh -huh. And then you know, you would, the speaker would act like a microphone and uh -huh. you would amplify the signal. Well, I haven't tried that out yet, but that was in Flanagan's Pyramid Power book. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I did try the proof of concept of the Neurophone, and that sure worked. Uh -huh. But the, the Neurophone that's available on the market now isn't the same. You know, it uses pi piezo uh, elements for the uh, electrodes, and they become little speakers when you put it on the body. And I proved that because I bought a Neurophone and experimented with it, and I found out, well, if I put a pillow over the electrode you couldn't hear a sat the thing. So it was just um, making okay, the so sound on the surface of the skin. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but the original one used it, you know, several hundred volts and the frequency modulated just like the new one is, but you had an insulated pad, it's like a capacitor electrode, and that really worked. And uh -huh. 
but the government compensated the patent when he applied for it and they held it for 12 years, probably experimenting to see if they could use it for a mind control device and then they gave it back to him after 12 years and I think they told, they mandated that he use, lower the voltage and use a piezo element instead of the higher voltage and it doesn't work the same. So if somebody wanted to reproduce it, what would you recommend? Where, do, where, where to start? Well, I'm gonna, one of the things I'm going to experiment with is see if I can uh, run it through the bath machine and just make the neurophone circuit like you know, mo a frequency modulation. I could use a 555 timer for that. What is 555 timer? It's a little chip. That, oh, a chip, okay. And, and you get this uh, interval timer kit from uh -huh. Bellman. Uh-huh. And uh, you can modulate, frequency modulate it, and... Uh, Frequent, adjust the frequency of it, and you can adjust the the pulse width too. So, it's a so what do you put the? Is it still the bow and arrow principle? Or is no, it this is different. This is something different. Can you describe it a little more? Well, what I would do is a. I'm also considering maybe experiment see if I can run it on the put it on the plasma tube of the Rife machine and see if you can hear it that way. I'm gonna I'm gonna try these things. I'm, this 40 kilohertz is definitely a window frequency, so that would act as a carrier wave in the Rife machine, and then the, you know, the modulated frequency would be the Rife frequency that you'd modulate it with. Okay, so Rife machine, but how would you use it in a galvanic, galvanic bath? Well, I just put the input into the galvanic bath like I've got now. I can just put the Rife frequencies in. Ah, it. got you. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I'm going to. My plan is experiment on both of those with the neurophone idea. Neurophone. And just do it like the original. You know, uh -huh. use it. Uh, so I, I won't be using high voltage necessarily, but I'll be conducting through the water instead of through a piezo crystal. Ah. And then the Rife machine will be on the plasma bulbs. I don't know if it'll, if you'll ever hear it or not. But you know, it might have other effects. Like yes. It might, Therapeutic, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it's something to experiment with. It's all experimental. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Yeah, I like to play around and experiment with things. I remember when I was very young, I read this article from um, the IEEE's, it's the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineers, and they had an article where they set up this experiment where they put a, a you know, like a grid overhead and charge it with thousands of volts and had somebody sit there with a typewriter and type and they would turn the grid off and on and, 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 and watch the typing speed increase every time it was on. So I thought, then I thought, well, what else will this, if it'll do that, I bet it'll do other things. And then I rigged it up and tried it for pain relief. Sure enough, it worked for that. When I had a wisdom tooth pulled, you know, I know those are pretty painful when you come out. So I had it rigged up and ready. I had about 40,000 volts plus in a piece of uh, auto ignition wire so that you, you know, the field would come through the wire and then you'd get a, a pico ampage, a, a leakage current through the insulation um, which uh, Dr. Becker discovered it is a current of injury so it could regenerate tissue when you applied that current of injury and, and the scar tissue wouldn't form. So I had a, a friend was living on this old mining property and basically camping out in, in an RV. And I had this device, this uh, electrostatic field device with me. You could plug it into 12 volts. And it produced about 8,000 volts DC positive. And so this guy injured his fingertip, just mm -hmm. smashed it to the bone and the fingernail fell off and the, the tissue was split, the bone was sticking out. And took him to the VA hospital. They said, well, come back tomorrow, we'll amputate it for you. We don't have time right now. And they didn't even clean the wound, they just wrapped it up, you know. We got, he was using this device overnight, sleeping with it, and it would reduce the pain in his back during the day. And so he'd been using this every night for, since we were together. So he decided, well, let's try and Let's use it on, on his finger, on his finger to stop the pain. So we got a, uh, I, I got got the idea to put a, you know, like a bucket of water. Put his hand in it and then put the element in the water. 
and you put a little hydrogen peroxide in the water to you know to help kill the sterilize, infection. Sterilize, yeah, huh? Yeah, sterilize it. And so it didn't stop the pain right away, but in, you know within three days, all the dead tissue fell off. It's the bone sticking out, and the joint was still uh, intact, but, but all the flesh was gone on the last on the fingertip bone. And so he held in there night and day, slept with his hand in the bucket, and only get up to, to go to the bathroom and to eat something. And it took two months and his whole fingertip grew back perfect. And first started like where there was a bone and it got just wider and wider and it was the pink color. And then it the, just filled out and after two months it was a whole fingertip, a fingernail, fingerprint, everything perfect. Wow. And then, then the guy had another injury, was helping somebody something and, and banged his head. And, and then that guy took him to the VA hospital, same VA hospital, and the same people were there and noticed his finger was grown back, and they wanted to know how he did it. And so they were starting to ask questions. This is the interns. So the senior staff just hushed it all, get back to work, we're not going to talk about it, blah, blah, blah. And that was the end of it. I would have taken it in there and let them do research on it if they wanted, but they don't want things like that. And um, they also didn't want to, I mean, it was... Um you know, they don't want you to get harmed for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very simple device. I made it out How of do it. you make it? It was, it? it was an old uh, computer CRT power supply, and it was a standalone in a little, its own little box. Okay. And so it was running on 24, it was designed for 24 volts, but it would run on 12. Okay. And it would ha drop the voltage in half. Okay. And so I just rigged it up, I just, and then I used the piece of high tension, high voltage wire that had good insulation on it and, and made a little uh, pad out of it for treatment. And it worked for basically for pain relief. So just 24 volts and how does it work? Well it's a you know it's a little DC power supply with a you know it was like a switching power supply. So it, what do you put in the bucket? Well I put the the, the element the, the the shielded high tension shielded anode in the bucket. And, but you didn't put the high voltage there, it was just Well, the high voltage. voltage was contained in the wire, so it wouldn't, you wouldn't get shocked because the... Oh, was there was high voltage there. there was, yeah, it was high voltage. How in, do you make it? Well, the, the uh, power supply produced it, and then I made that... You uh, said it's 24 volts. That was the input to drive it. Oh, input, and then there was a, a, a transformer which makes... Yeah, it was a little uh, switching power supply with a transformer and a higher frequency, so it was small, you know. Uh -huh. So it was... Um, so what is the voltage which was out, the final voltage? Well, you, running on 12 volts gave about 8,000. 8,000 volts, all insulated? All insulated. How do you insulate the end of the, of the wire? Well, I um, would cap it off. Put, uh, what cap do you put? Oh, well, silicone works great. So you just sort of thing. use some silicon glue? Yeah, and then use some heat shrink over it. Oh, silicon glue and heat shrink. And another way I'd make them, I would bend the wire in half and make a, a just fire with a double wire and then come out with the other wire oh, and terminate Oh, that's easier. It. That was easier. So just make a loop of the wire and yeah. the working end is in insulated. Yeah, when I had the wisdom tooth pull, I just had just a big loop. A big loop of 8,000 volts. Uh -huh. Well, no, that was 40,000. And it was a thicker insulated wire. Okay, 40,000. Yeah. I never worked with 40,000. I just had uh, 3,000 or 4,000 yeah. uh, power Well, supply. it had no amperage. I mean, if it if you got shocked, it wasn't a bad shock. Right. And uh -huh. I would put resistors in series with the output so you could even touch it and it wouldn't shock you about it. It just prickled. That makes sense. Yeah, so it makes That's it safe. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And I've got an ion generator on the display, which has a little rotor on it, and it, it's so strong that the ion's repelling the rotor as it uh, throws the ion. How much is it? Uh, how much do you sell it for? Uh, about 600. 600. Ion generator. What, how, what, what are the effects of it? Hmm? How do you use it? What, what are the effects? Well, you put it and it cleans the air. Is it the Chizhevsky lamp or something else? Hmm? Chizhevsky? I mean, the, it was invented by a Russian called uh, Chizhevsky. Oh, the negative ion? Yeah. Is it the same thing? Um, well, it's it's similar. I know the ones on the market have these little pins, and those pins, uh -huh, needles, uh -huh. needles uh -huh. produce the ion. Well, I got the same thing, but it's on a little rotor, and it spins like a lawn sprinkler that spins. Those ones that spin, it's just like that. 
and they got little points and on the end and the ions spit off the end of the point. I, I ordered one of those and I didn't like it. I didn't like this. I mean, it was just hurting my uh, my breathing, like throat. So I really? just. Uh, but maybe it was a bad. I'm, I would think every device is different. Did, did you get that from Information Unlimited? Then no, I just ordered something somewhere. Not, I got, yours, not yours. I got mine as a kit, and then I. Let's go in the shadows. It's yes, too it's hot. Too here. hot. I don't want to stop because it, I don't want to edit it. I want just to publish it as is without editing. So, uh, so how do you feel? What feeling? What? How do, does it feel for you when you use it? Oh, it feels good. And it protects me from getting colds and stuff, picking up other people's stuff. Uh huh. So also, I have a. I was running a high tension shielded anode at the head and a high tension shield a cathode at the foot and that really protected me well because then I'm running a tiny current through my body all night breaking free radical bonds and uh, you know, quenching free radicals. What voltage do you use? What voltage? That one um, about 20,000 and I use a 20,000 so you sleep under 20,000 volts and the uh, cathode is on the what? On the, on cathode's the head? at the foot and the anode at the head. And cathode is the plus, right? Cathode is the negative and the anode is the plus. I'm a chemist, so for me, cations are positive. So cathode is... Positive cations are attracted to anodes, which is... Uh, yeah. Which is... Positive. Hmm. And so I put a silver piece on right. the anode of the bath machine and that makes the colloidal silver because the positive kind of eats the, that dissolves, slowly dissolves the silver and makes the colloid. Well, the cathode will tend to collect a plaque on it. So the cathode can be made out of any metal pretty much. Uh -huh. It's not going to... It doesn't get, dissolve. It doesn't dissolve. But it does pull the alkaline toxins out of, out of you and that's, I guess that some of that the scale that builds up is some, some of the stuff it pulls out of you, probably. Coming back to the idea of sleeping under the 20,000 volts, yeah. insulated, so it wouldn't hurt you, it's, it's insulated. Right. But what's the idea? So there is some, is it physical current that goes through insulation or is it some kind of special current? It, it's a pico amp, it's very tiny amperage. That, you so can, why would it be any healing? Like if you were to take the wire and put it all over an ashtray, the ashes would dance under it. You know, really? Yeah, they would. You, or a piece of paper, a piece of tissue so it's paper. It's electrostatic, but, basically. Yeah, it's electrostatic. It's the same thing as when you rub a piece of uh, uh, something on a wool or something, and it you know, will pick up pieces so of paper you, and stuff. So you sleep under electrostatic field, and yeah. you electrostasize you. Actually... Oh, that comes very close to uh, research by Michael Levin, Tufts Institute in Boston. He is the leader in electrostatic biology, mm. and he shows the effect, positive effects of electrostatic therapy on uh, development. Right, so he right. plays with uh, mm, like experimental embryos like frog embryos, fish embryos, and now he got funded for using electrostatic therapy against cancer in models. So he works with model animals. Mm. So That's, here you go. I didn't I didn't think that you know this stood I thought I, I never paid attention because I was always thinking about vibration. Never tried that on cancer. And electrostatic <laughs> is um, up to take it and you have done it and you like it. Yeah, and then I found, I, I'm a friend with uh, Dr. McGreedy who runs the Magnetic Research Institute in Tucson. And oh, wow. I introduced him to the galvanic bath, and he thought it was, he was so impressed with it, he, he installed a special bathtub and found that if people use the galvanic bath, the magnetic treatment works a lot better. That magnetic, that, the magnets, these big electromagnets that go from floor to ceiling, and the bed goes in between the poles, you know, the north pole's underneath and the south pole's on top. And it, it, this can regrow a knee joint. You don't need knee replacement surgery. You can just grow it with a mag, these giant magnets. You know, it might take two weeks. You have to live under this magnet. 
you know, get up to shower, you know, to bathe and to go to the bathroom and eat, you know, and then you're, but you're living under this magnet. And um, so people recover much faster using the galvanic bath because but otherwise he has to give chelating agents because it mobilizes the heavy metals that are in the joint that he's treating. So the galvanic bath just pulls straight into the water. Yeah, my joints need that. I'm, I'm a volleyball player and most of the volleyball players suffer in that well, you older need, age. You need to try out the galvanic bath. Yeah. Maybe we can do it this afternoon somewhere in, you know, in the hot tub out here. I'm leaving it too. Oh, sure. I'm flying away. But, but maybe you I'm considering it buying it. I'm considering buying it. We could try it in a, just after this. I can let you use it and go to the hot tub. And I'll have to right. stand, man the table for a while, but I'll oh, show okay. you how to set it up and use it. Wow. So. Um, you need to take one with you. Yeah. Experiment with it. Uh, now, mm, the question I, I, I wanted you to discuss the uh, interferometer thing. Oh, the interferometer. Yeah, there's a... Well, let's move a little bit. The, the light in the light. Oh, oh. oh, we'll get better light. Mm -hmm. Interferometer story. Oh, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. The background, I mean, it's automatic uh, sensitivity, so if the background is bright, then our, our faces are too dark. Yeah, right. Well, the interferometer, I, I read about it in, in a book. It's uh, called Fertilands, that, uh, where the Russians developed this thing. And you'd have uh, uh, two caduceus coils for the receiving end so of it. So caduceus, can you define caduceus? I'll show your hands now. Well, can you show the caduceus? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a coil that has it's wrapped like this, and then it goes back over, so it crosses the other, so the windings are crossing like this. So, so is it like team, team, so, team? Yeah, something team, like that. I, I, I have a device from Russia which has a coil which is like eight, number eight, but obviously they, they, they cross a certain angle. Well, this goes like this, and then it comes back over the, and crosses the first. So it goes over and then back over. So multiple, yeah. and then it goes back. So it makes a tube. And so oh, it's a tube. Okay, got it. So it creates a beam, a straight beam. Beam from which it, place? From along the axis of the tube or perpendicular to the no, axis? No, through the tube. Through the tube, okay. Yeah. And so then you have two of these and where the where they you aim them where the beams cross. Mm -hmm. And so the, the pickup you know, as it sucks and pulls energy out of a place, I mean, it can just instantly freeze something if it, if it was aimed at some spot. Like, well, they could knock a plane out of there just by freezing the engine. You know, just super cool it instantly. Or superheat it at the other end where, the, where it pulls that energy and then you have the other transmitting end where the beams cross and that energy comes out at the point of where they cross at any point in space, wherever you aim it. You'll go okay, through so, the earth, through the you know, water. For people who are not familiar, it is transdimensional, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a transdimensional thing. So what it does, one coil or two coils? We're talking about two coils, right? They're, they're total four coils. Two four transmitting, coils. two receiving. Two transmitting, two receiving. So what happens, uh, there are focal points where in one point there is a transmission from conversion from our dimension energy into another dimension energy. Then this another dimension energy goes to the two. Then it, then it comes back into this dimension at the point where they cross. The to the two cross. coils, then there is a transfer of energy right. to another two coils, and yeah. then there is another focus, so the second focus focal point the uh, energy comes back in our dimension. So there is trans-dimensional um, transfer of the energy. According to Thomas Bearden, they, um, since they tested it on the Thrasher submarine, does it, that was a disaster. They couldn't figure out what sank it. And then the shuttle disaster was also another test of it. They didn't uh, do any more. Was it a test of the coil by Americans or Ru attack by Russians? Russian. This is during so, the Cold So yeah, War. Russians. Us, yeah, us, Cold Russians. War. During the Cold War, just did the terrorism using the scroll. So they would explode something, 
uh, on Russian territory and then refocus the energy to a target and exp basically explode the target by uh, from the distance transdimensionally. Right. Right, right. I just read about that yesterday in a, in a book. There is a store, a little store of this book. So I obviously I was uh, interested in Russian weapons. Obviously, of course. So you saw uh, it in that book, didn't and, you? And uh, I, I I lived through Chernobyl, and for me, Chernobyl disaster was, uh, you know, life changing. I was in Moscow, but the cloud was going everywhere. So you know, we were considering to evacuate my family and small kids. Like me, my wife, and small kids, we would run away if the... Uh, uh, luckily, I had a, a radiation sensor, like it's called Geiger counter, Geiger counter. And I measured everything around, and uh, we measured the products, and at some point I realized there was no contamination in Moscow, nothing that I could detect with Geiger counter. But I was trained to work with radioactivity, so I know pretty well the, the levels and the dangers, so I was ready to run away if radioactivity was what would go higher. I mean, it was for real. And now, because I saw that book, I, I was immediately attracted, and I read, read what you said. Yeah, yeah well, you saw it. Yeah. And he, they all here, Birden also said that Chernobyl was a, a counter attack, basically. The Americans would redirect the attack of Russians, and so there, instead of Russians hitting America, it would come back to whatever source was there. So. The side effect of that was that Chernobyl exploded, basically. Like according to Bearden, he said that the American scientists just poo-pooed the idea of a, inter a scalar interferometer and wouldn't bother to deal All with right. it. So I don't know how they did it. They, I guess they had some other way to do the Chernobyl thing. I didn't know that the, that was a, an attack. But I guess, uh, but it uh, makes sense that it would be. <laughs> possibly. I don't know. I, I think there was a chapter of that. Anyway, I was exposed to that idea yesterday, and uh, you were talking about peaceful applications. Yeah, um, it could be used for communications. It could be well. You could get extreme cooling. It would be a way of freezing things, and it, it would be a very good instrument. I mean, it could be done on a small scale. I mean, the Russians had this huge thing set up. And had like they would have the transmitters miles and miles apart, so they could send the, the, the further apart the transmitter was, the further you could get an accurate target, you know, because if you have it too close together, it's going to, sure. you know, yep. going to make a long, thin point of crossing. You want the target, you want further that, so you've got it, and so you can control the uh, distance, you know, the target area. You can, it's even more accurate to, if you have the distance of the transmitting coils farther apart. So they had them located in different places in, in Russia. Mm -hmm. and, it, and this beam could go right through the earth and come out the other side and where they crossed, mm -hmm. boom. And you could walk through the individual beam, you wouldn't even feel anything, it's not even in this dimension. If you're not in the focal point, yes. Yeah, as long as you're not in the focal point. Because it's not in this dimension. Now if you were at the focal point of the freezing part, it would be frozen through and through solid instantly. It doesn't take time, like normally, the, it takes time of, of cooling something down. The surface gets ah. cold first, and then the heat's pulled out of it gradually. Well, so in, in biology, a big market is PCR machines, and they are limited by the tr transmission of the uh, heat, which is limited. Like, you have, smaller, you have to make smaller and smaller tubes and smaller right. and smaller um, heaters, so they don't have any inertia. And uh, the PCR machine, you cool down, cool down, and heat up like uh, 26 times. Pulls and now um, through all through the tissue. You so can do PCR machine it, using uh, scalar interferometer. It's even, it's instantaneous and is even throughout. Also, for our experiments, so, we would use uh, instantaneous cooling for uh, for things. Like, so to to make cooling even in like of the brain stuff or the brain yeah. samples, you can do that. You could you could have a real small one and pin, make a pinpoint. How about you cancer freeze a treatment? Tumor. You can. Uh, oh, it would be great for, for killing tumors. You can you kill could, tumor. You, you would just have the beam thing and zap the tumor. You could freeze it or you could burn it. Yeah, pay attention. It's for sale. No, it's it's free. I mean, it's a free idea. Yeah, you I mean, don't sell it, right? You didn't patent it. I don't know if it's patented or not. But if I you think. want an expert who can make help, make help you to build it, 
you know where to uh, how to find uh, Burnton. I haven't built one yet, so I don't know. Oh, you don't. <laughs> but you, I mean, they have a good engineer. Yeah, I just read the book. You know? Yep. <laughs> I thought, well, this is what could be done with this, you know, and that, and whatever. And I'll get around to experimenting with. I'll just do a miniature one, you know, to experiment with. Uh huh. Because the Russians did it on a huge scale. They probably did it miniature first, and then proved it, and then they built it on a massive scale. Right. And then scientists there were afraid of the backlash happened, so they never used it anymore. You know, they didn't. Yeah, by some reason that's sort of. I mean, except 9/11, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it might have been used there too. That, that is possible. There, I don't know. This guy, this friend of mine, had a book that was showing some very weird uh, stuff from that 9/11 thing, like a. Car yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be, the engine would be completely melted down. The back of the car was perfectly intact. You know, weird uh, stuff yeah. like that. So that could have been scalar interferometer or something that, else. Or something else. You, know. um, you also mentioned the um, eavesdropping. Oh yeah, uh, in Henry Moray's book, the sea, the energy. Let's see. What's an energy? The free. It was a free energy device he invented and he pulled the energy out of the zero point in uh, you know the zero point and he had a listening device before he did that he described this listening device where you could aim the you didn't need a transmitter you just could aim it at the so it, it was based on the scalar interferometer I think it's it, it looked it, from the sound of it you didn't describe how it oh worked. I see so you can so I reverse engineer back yeah, yeah, yeah. So guess he would he was had a way of aiming it and he could aim this thing in a room and pick up all the conversation going on without having a bug in the room and then he he had a receiver he could listen to it and so now, the, now the, using germanium in his germanium. thing it's one of his elements that he was using for this stuff he also used it apparently in his you know, radiant energy device oh in my presentation yesterday, I also mentioned germanium, so interesting yeah. coincidence. So that's a pretty interesting rare earth uh, metal. I guess it's a metal, isn't it? Germanium? Uh, the mirror, it was germanium mirror, so I don't know. Yeah. Maybe a metal. And they, anyway. they made the early transmis transistors out of it and diodes out of it. Um, and they went to silicon. Let's speculate. I, my, my main project now is developing devices which would help telepathy. Oh. Let's speculate on that. Well, now speaking of that, there's this, there's this thing you can Google God helmet, and there's this uh, scientist named Michael Persinger. Michael Persinger. Yeah, and, and then there was Todd Murphy. They worked on it together, and so they come up with these. They would study people, you know, yogis and whatnot that could go into deep meditative uh -huh. states, and mm -hmm. they could brain map. You can find out places in the brain where um, the, the, the tension goes inside to activate these places. And so he come up with this headband with coils. He wow. doesn't, doesn't use the helmet anymore. That was his first prototype. But he just makes a headband and runs these coils around it. And he has a computer program and you um, hook up your computer and you have these four USB cables to hook up and you know you have to have a some computers have to add a another sound card to it or something with the USB out. All right. So you need two two USB channels to do it. Mm -hmm. So I haven't got it working yet but I'm you know, I've been busy getting ready for this conference so I didn't I just Oh you're got working it. on that. Well I ordered the thing I got it but I haven't got it running yet cuz um it's pretty complicated to set it up. It's not very user friendly. Now, it could have been made with its own special controller where you didn't need a computer, it'd be real easy to use, but he didn't sell enough of them to warrant the expense of developing a controller, so he did it the cheapest way possible to get it out there. Uh -huh. And so I got one, and I'll get it working eventually. I'm not that great with computers. I didn't grow up with them. You know, I'm 72 years old. When I grew up in school, it was slide rules and calculators all I had. <laughs> no computers. I also used a slide ruler, <laughs> and I love them. Yeah. Not that I used it much, but I yeah. love the.
Continue. That was a technical interruption. Yeah. So you were talking about uh, that we didn't grow up with the computers. Right, right. So, I don't know, I'm just kind of picking it up on my, you know, as I go along. And um, so I'm going to get this thing working. But anyway, so the way he calls it a God helmet is because he can, uh, he's got two, like, couple of different programs. One is a training program to, to where you can develop the ability to go there at will. And then there's another program that just puts you there. So anyway... Um, oh, I see. I see. Is there a feedback? Will be a by a feedback or you just kind of just one way? It's one way. Mm -hmm. but, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna try it as soon as I get this thing working. I, because I have... A, I, Kind of, I involuntary access these states in a wonderful, pleasant state of being, but I'm not able to hold on to it long. I go in it for a little while and come out of it. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's possible to to have that as your uh, default setting. See, oh, wow. the the default setting for the general society is on the negative side. Of course. And you want to change the default setting to the positive. I know somebody that did that, and he didn't have any machine or anything. And this guy was, you know, technical-minded. You know, he wasn't religious at all. He was somewhat spiritual, but not religious. He didn't if he talk about Jesus Christ. He would say, ah, I don't want to talk about that, or he'd walk away or something. He was a non-believer, so to speak. Then, you know, about three or four months later, he's, he's, he's a born-again Christian. So I gotta see how he did this. <laughs> so I went to, and when we, I would, we would, me and my partner Dorit would visit him when we go to the hot springs. It wasn't too far, and then on the way back we would stop off and visit him. He was always uh, drinking and smoking pot, you know, and and he would fix us a drink and and, and smoke a joint or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. My partner wouldn't would get the drink, but she wouldn't smoke anything. Mm -hmm. And and so then and then we visit him. And it's, he's acting really crazy, like oh, he says he's going around slaying demons and all this kind of stuff. And this guy's got really weird. You know, he did too much acid or something. And then next time we saw him, he was he was better. And then the next time we saw him, he was better still, and he was very happy. And then. Then I decided I'm going to go visit this guy and see what, how this happened. So I went to visit him, and <clears throat> he said that, you know, his wife had left him, and and then you know things were just chaotic, and, and then the, the final straw was a fire was approaching his house, and he thought he was going to lose everything, so he just gave up and surrendered it all to God. This. And guess what? God answered him. <laughs> the fire changed direction. <laughs> and then it, it it pulled him into, I guess what they call the Holy Spirit. You know? and, so, and, and so I, when I visited him, you know, we were sitting on this, this porch, and then he, con he, went in, he went into his meditative state, connected with the Holy Spirit, and he took me with him. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He took me with him. And... I never was able to, I tried to learn to meditate, but I never could keep my mind still enough to do it. So it, how was it? When, when it you, when it he, was the most wonderful. He took wonderful. you there, what happened? Oh, it's like, it's like a feeling, the, the closest I can describe it is the feeling you get when like a, a, a lost child is returned to its mother in that moment of they embrace, that moment of glory that I feel last maybe a couple of minutes. Uh -huh. But it's like that, and and it was sustained. In fact, when I left him, I was I stayed in that state for a week. Wow, the whole week it was incredible. It was wonderful. I couldn't believe how wonderful it was. I mean, things that were normally very irritating didn't even phase me. You know, I just <laughs> uh -huh. and this energy is like I was receiving this love energy. You know, from the spirit, and then it was outflowing. And so as long as you kept it moving, you know, that's what it wanted. It wanted to flow. And so you just put it out into the world, you know, blessing everybody or whatever to make it flow. And it was wonderful. I, I, I never felt so good in my whole life. And 
Let me pause for a second and we'll move to the colder place. Now it's hot here. The sun kind of reached that place. And we continue that the third part. So you were talking about your experiences and you're creating uh, the God helmet, right? Yeah, right. Well, I didn't create the God helmet. I just bought one. Assembly. And, uh, Assembly. So, and haven't got it hooked up yet, but I haven't spent enough time with it yet because I was getting busy for the conference. So my question was, uh, I'm working on telepathy and I want to make a machine which would telepathically connect to people who are not necessarily spiritually well, advanced. I, I think that this this uh, device could work for that. Mm -hmm. And you maybe, maybe you might are you good at designing circuits and stuff? Can you no, no, I don't do that. Oh. But, you know, I might use your help. Well, I'm not that good either. I just know basic electronics. Oh, I, I see, I see. You know, huh? I build my machines with little modules that are already made. <laughs> just right. Put things together. But you have ideas. How yeah, to, like, I, I'm more of an ideation person. I'm not a, a, that much of an in electrical and electronics engineer. I know the basics. I know how to uh -huh, solder uh -huh, and put uh -huh. together things. I can put together kits and build things, uh -huh. but I'm not really an electronic engineer, but uh, I have the idea, I have a friend who's also not an engineer, but he's, he's like me, he has ideas, and he has an engineer friend that designs and builds the stuff, and he's got a couple of machines on the market, and he's, he's very interested in my uh, high tension shielded anode device, because I, he, he has this head injury and he's always been sick ever since with Lyme disease and other things. He's tried everything and nothing works. You know, they get some relief and then it's right back again. And this latest thing was it really did a wonderful thing. He's, and he says if it really does something, he's going to have his engineer friend perfect it and get that on the market and wow. I'll get a royalty for it, you know. <laughs> so it's uh, the one which is, uh, you sleep with 20,000 volts, is the same thing? Yeah, now there's a, in fact, I found the, 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 the doc that runs the Magnetic Research Institute uh, showed me this device. What's his he, name? Dr. McGreedy. McGreedy, uh huh? And he showed me this device called Pro Energen, and this company's producing it. And it's an electrostatic uh -huh. negative charge, it's exactly what I got. <laughs> so somebody else was already doing, doing the negative side of it, and I was doing a positive, a pull, and a push. And, and uh -huh. so you can Google the uh, uh, pro energen and then read the yeah, and then read the the uh, synopsis on it. And it tells you how it works, and it's really good for for eliminating viruses, not bacteria, but viruses. It's real good at eliminating. So that that's interesting. Here I've had this for <laughs> several years. You know, I don't know how long this company's been in business, but. I came up with the same thing independently without even knowing anybody else did it. <laughs> so do you sell your device? Um, not, I don't have one with me. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start making them now. And How been, much would you charge you know, to send it to me, to mail it to me? Um, well, I'll have to build it and see. It'll probably be probably in the vicinity of the Rife machine. I know this, this Tro Energen costs 2500 bucks, and it's just one side. I can do it for less than that, I think. Got it. So, talking about the connecting two people uh, telepathically, you, if people don't, you know, cannot go into spiritual meditation state, is there any way to make them talk telepathically through, well, through um, the machine? I think that machine would probably help with that. Bring them in a special thing. Because I think what you have to do is synchronize the brain waves. With, yes. From person to person. Yes. And to do it. Uh, um, Entrainment of two people, yeah, two entrainment. certain frequency. Yep, uh -huh. So you could probably hook two people up to the same machine so they have the same and probably would do it. I'll have to talk to him about it. You can call him up and talk to Who? him. Um, Todd Murphy. Todd Murphy. <laughs> He's on the website. You can just Google God Helmet and you get the website. Gotcha. There and mm -hmm. Got a phone number. You can order a machine. And that's a good question to ask him about. How could you run two people off the same machine, you probably could, and you, that, that would work. If you did that, that would work. Suppose we use uh, the interferometer, how do you call it, scalar interferometer? Scalar interferometer. Suppose we use scalar interferometer to take the, um, whatever patterns are there in the brain, yeah. and refocus on another person. 
Well, that, I mean, that's a, would it explode another person? <laughs> we probably do it with a very miniaturized one and, and just use uh, micro amps instead of mega amps. <laughs> okay. You'd probably do it that way. But that's probably, you know, it's probably simpler ways to do it. You know, you could just the uh, brain entrainment. You know, like these uh, uh, ELF generators. Maybe having one of those might even do it. Uh -huh. Where you just get two brains at the same entrainment would probably make it work. Extra low frequencies, you mentioned? Yeah, yeah. Because the brain waves are all extra low frequencies. Yeah. <laughs> Like hertz, yeah, yeah, tens of hertz, hundreds of hertz, and kilohertz. Well, the brain waves only go up to thirty hertz. Oh, those ones. No, yeah. that is a lot of smaller. Yeah, bumps. yeah, right. Yeah, thirty hertz are major things. Yeah. That's that's the highest end, and then it, you know, goes from zero to thirty hertz. And so, it, it would be playing around with those brain frequencies, and then tra and training two people to the same thing probably to get the, get it to work. All right. And then the... See, Looks the, like somebody needs me. I, I got to wrap up for now. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, for wrapping up, again, repeat you again your website. Yeah, I'll, I'll be around. I'll be here all day. What's your website? Oh, it's uh, aquatronicsglobal.com. Bington seems... Bisbee, uh, Arizona. Arizona. Yep. Thank you very much. And um, so the phone numbers are there. Oh. You can order a machine. Do you want to give your phone number? Uh, okay, my phone number is uh, 520-366-1626. All right, so I think it was uh, an extraordinary interview at the Australia <laughs> Technology <laughs> Conference, and uh, I'm really grateful for that and I, I'm so happy to meet you and I will be in touch all right well, good day. And thank you for putting me on <laughs> right, goodbye people